Hallelujah. How's everybody today? Are you blessed and highly flavored? Appointed and anointed? Praise be to God. Armed and dangerous. That's what the world should see us as. The demonic forces should see us as armed and dangerous. Amen? They know who you are. And they know who you're not. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good all the time, amen? Welcome to Sunday Morning Live. We're training for reigning. <laughs> Glory to God. Would you turn to Proverbs 29? Thank you, Master. Verse 18, is everybody there? Let's speak it. Where there's no revelation, <laughs> there's what? There, they do what? People cast off what? Restraints. So if a person casts off restraints, can they resist? No. The Bible says submit to God, then you can resist the devil. Amen? So where there's no revelation, the people cast off restraints, but happy is he who keeps the law. No revelation, no revealing of the unseen realm of Jesus and his kingdom. See, for me and you, that must be renewed, refreshed. Renewed and refreshed all the time. Or else we begin to drift. And we fall back into the ways of the world, the old man, the old character, deceptive, lying, cheating, self-righteous, self-seeking, fearful. Amen? So there's got to be revelation of the unseen realm of Jesus and his kingdom for me and you to resist the attacks of deception through the powers of darkness and all its forces of evil. Revelation is a tool of resistance. It's a what? Tool of resistance. And we want to talk about tools of resistance. The Bible tells us, submit to God and you are able to resist the devil. The problem is, is people aren't resist, uh, submitting to God. In other words, his character, his integrity. That's how people backslide. That's how it starts. In other words, you get freed, and you agree with one thing of the enemy without true repentance of it. And the enemy still has a hold in you there. And what he does, he begins to plant more and more seed, and it begins to promote you. He puts more desires of the things that you want for you. There's an exchange for now you instead, instead of the kingdom. Oh, this is what I want now. This is what I deserve. Self-entitlement. All of these things begin to manifest. Why? Because of the drift of the presence of God. You got to remember something, that the presence of God is holy and righteous and true. You know, I, I shared Saturday morning, uh, the Lord was sharing with me, uh, all of a sudden I saw the signs six feet apart. I think, what the heck's with the six feet apart? You know, I mean, for all of these fake covert disease things that's going on out there. Six feet, apart, six feet apart, stay six feet apart. See, even the powers of darkness know something. Because a circumference of six feet around you is a place where number six means man, amen? Six, six, six is the powers of darkness. But in that six foot circumference is an atmosphere that you and I are to keep clean and holy. And if that atmosphere is not kept clean and holy, the enemy has access to you. So in that, there's got to be an atmosphere where you and I must keep it clean and holy. That means our hands must be clean and our heart must be pure. And you cannot get that atmosphere because you're an exchanging atmosphere. When we come together together and we worship the Lord, if you can't worship God, you can't exchange your atmosphere. It's impossible. 
the enemy will still bring doubt, fear, and you and you and you, self-entitlement. What about me? Why well, I need to get my life together? What about, wait a minute. I thought you gave your life to Jesus. This is where we are more concerned about our life instead of the life of Christ and expressing him and more expressing ourselves and our needs. This is a great plan and deception of the enemy. Because of one thing, when you are always looking at me, what can I do for me to better myself? What I can do for the, does everybody understand that? When the enemy gets your eyes on you, you get some off of God. And he knows that if he can do that like this, he knows he can just easily plant that hook. There are people walking around with hooks all over their jaws and don't even know it. They've been biting the bait of Satan for so many years, proclaiming them to be Christians, but can't walk in victory, always backsliding, one step forward, three steps back, and starting over and over and over again. Never able to be getting to that place of refresh making wrong choices, wrong decisions, making wrong purchases, doing things out of God's order. All of these things just because of the area where there's a lack of submission to God and a lack of being able to resist the voice of the devil. Does everybody understand this? Remember, we are not fighting flesh and blood. The word says that war broke out in heaven and Satan and his kingdom was cast to this realm. And until we truly make what is unseen to become seen and everything that we do and every influence, judging that, we will be easily deceived. Is everybody okay? So revelation is a tool of resistance. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Tools of resistance. Hallelujah. Verse sixteen. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our what? Outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being what? Renewed by, day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are what? Seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things that are seen are what? Temporary. But the things that are not seen are what? Eternal. They're what? Eternal. Looking at the eternal is a position. See, when you're an individual that's always looking at the unseen and the eternal, in other words, what's influencing me? What's influencing that person? See, discerning the spirits is finding out what spirit's influencing. And when you're able to live a life of making what is unseen to become seen, you live a life of victory. It is a spiritual position to resist. See, not only there are tools of resistance, but there's a position of resistance. Because you can't use the tools without being positioned. Amen. And Psalm 14. Psalm 14, verse 1. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. The fool. What is a fool? Someone has been fooled. <laughs> deceived. You've been deceived by what? The voice of the stranger. God calls him a fool. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. 
There is none who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand and who seek God. They have all turned aside. They have together become corrupt. There is none who does good. No, not one. Now look it. Many fools because they, many people become fools because they've been deceived. Being full with deception and lies. And what they don't do is they don't seek God in his presence. And without seeking God in his presence, there won't be understanding. So no seek, no understanding. Amen? No seek, no understanding. Now, one of the things that people need understanding is the unseen fluence. And because of that, they're not able to abide in truth. Now, if you go to Psalm 20 or Proverbs 28 for a second. These individuals are called fools. Why? Because they neither seek God in his presence nor have understanding of the unseen realm. Fear told them that. Proverbs 28, verse 5. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Evil men do not understand justice. But those who seek the Lord, what? Understand all. Oh, hallelujah. That's why the Bible says, seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added to you. Don't seek what you need. Seek him, and he'll bring direction to it. See, there's sometimes that there's things that we need that we have a tendency to go away about our business instead of waiting on God to direct us how to go get it. That's called wisdom. Tells you what? What to do. Amen. And then people realize later, man, I shouldn't have bought that. I shouldn't have got that. How many times have you bought a lemon? And I don't mean from the fruit stand. <laughs> a lemon. They call those cars that sound good, look beautiful, and then two days later they are, fall apart. A lemon. Go to 2 Timothy 3. Tools of, under, of resistance. Now we know about this scripture, but this is where we are at right now because we are on the last days and end times. In verse 1, let's speak it together. 2 Timothy 3, verse 1. But know this, that what? In the last days, perilous times will come. Are we in perilous times right now? If you don't know that, you're in trouble. <laughs> For men will be what? Lovers of themselves. Lovers of money. Boasters. Proud. Blasphemers. Disobedient to parents. Unthankful. Unholy. Unloving. Unforgiving. Slanders without self-control. Brutal despisers of good. Traitors. Headstrong. Haughty. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. They have a form of godliness, but deny the power. And from such people, make sure that you do not associate with. Turn away. For this sort of those who creep into households and ministries and businesses and make captives of gullible men and women, they load them down with sins and lead them away with various lusts and desires. They're always learning, but they never are able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Wow. Now, Janus and Jabiris resisted Moses, so that these also resist the truth. They are men of corrupt minds, disapproved the, concerning the faith, but they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifested to all, as theirs also was. In other words, they are self-seekers that are blinded to the truth, and they resist the truth because they've been taken captive with false doctrines, pride, and lust and desires of the world. 
they are not able to reach a level of faith to resist. Amen? See, faith is a tool of resistance. So that they can overcome. Again, is truth a tool of resistance? Yes. So you got faith and you have truth. That's our tool of resistance. That's why he says, my people are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge and lack of truth. In 1 Peter chapter 5. But it says something about faith, doesn't it? Faith comes by what? Hearing the word of God. 1 Peter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5, 5. Glory. Likewise, you younger people, immature, submit yourselves to your elders that are more mature. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with what? Humility. For God resists the what? The proud. God resists the proud. But he gives more grace to the what? Humble. Grace is God's plan. Amen? Proud. Pride. You know, that spirit has its own smell. You can smell that spirit. That prideful spirit is wretched smell. And people don't even realize they're carrying it. Now, I'm telling you, if you're walking in a the spirit, there are many things that you can sense. And you can smell. Thank God, because it can warn you. Hallelujah. And I don't mean B.O. I mean, this is a spirit. It may smell something close to B.O., but. Verse 6. Therefore what? Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. In other words, promote you, release a promise to you. Casting your care upon him for he cares for you. But you must be what? Sober, alert, and vigilant, consistent, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may what? Devour. What's the next verse say? Resist him. Steadfast in the what? Faith. So faith is a tool of resistance. Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So listen, don't think you're the only one going through it. Everybody goes through it. We make mistakes, amen? Anybody here not made a mistake yet? If you lift your hand, you're a liar. <laughs> he says this, but may the God, may, but may the God of all grace, of all the plan, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while. You know, challenges are sufferings. That's what God calls sufferings. Even his chastenings and rebukes, they're sufferings. You made a mistake. Sufferings. You forgot to lock your truck and everything got stolen out of it. That's suffering. But praise God, don't be stupid again. That happened to me this morning. <laughs> I won't be stupid again. So what, during the suffering, amen, he's going to do something. He's going to perfect Amen? He's going to establish, he's going to strengthen, and he's going to settle us no matter what we're going through. We know that God is a provider who restores everything. And everything's going to work to the good if you love him and you know that you're called by him. Resist steadfast in the faith as a tool. And again, faith comes by God's presence in his word, isn't it? From his words. James chapter 1. These are tools of resistance. James chapter 1.
when we were in the world, we used all kinds of tools of resistance. Baseball bats, foul language, hatred, vengeance. All kinds of things. And then people tried to cover those things with drugs, alcohol, and so forth. Offense, all of that stuff, you know. And it didn't work. James chapter 1, verse 12. But now that we are in a living, attached to the throne room of God, as the kingdom of God's children and offspring, and warriors of the Most High, we live a different life now. Amen. Verse 12. Blessed is the man who endures. Is endurance a sense of resistance? Yes. Who endures or resists temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive a crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say that when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his what? His own desires. Remember, addiction is nothing but a uh, high-ranking desire, amen? It's lust. Lust is a high desire. So when an individual is drawn away, they're tempted, they're first drawn away by their desires, and then they're enticed. In other words, you might see something you really want. You might be in a store, you see something you really want. But you can't get it yet. But you really want it now because you want it now. Because your human character wants things now. That's called the flesh. Can't wait. So you decide to take that and hide it. Hello? And hopefully nobody will buy it. Then you come back a week later and find it underneath a chair or somewhere in the store so because you finally got the money, and then you buy it. First of all, it's called thievery. It's called deception. And it's called self. Because there was no resistance to that temptation. Or how many people see something that they want to buy And they make justification for it, especially that lemon that looks beautiful. It has a few sounds in the engine, but you know what? I, I'm going to just ignore that. I can fix it. It only has three tires, but I can get one from the boneyard. All of the justifications to purchase because that desire is overtaking. It's a purchase out of God's time. And there isn't any resistance there why isn't there resistance because god's not first there wasn't a submission to god there wasn't even an acknowledgement lord is this what you want me to have does everybody understand that this is how doors open and people go back to their deceptive state again just that simple thing hello praise god Endurance is a tool of resistance. So if a person is not able to resist that, they will easily be overcome by the enemy. Hebrews 12. Hebrew. Everybody okay? You know, one of the things the devil loves to do is get people in debt. Boy, does he love to get people in debt. And why do people get in debt? Because they can't resist the temptation. No resistance. No using the tools. No, we don't have any excuses now because we have the truth. We have the tools. Amen? In verse 1, Hebrews 12, verse 1. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with what? Endurance, the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, 
who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. Again, we see here endurance, faith, and joy. Is joy a tool of resistance? Amen. Oil of gladness, joy. How do you get joy from God's presence? It says that a uh, uh, merry heart is good medicine. Amen. So joy is a tool of resistance. Because it says the joy of the Lord is our what? Strength. In Matthew 16. Hallelujah. Glory and glory and more glory. Mark 16, verse 13. I mean, Matthew 16, sorry. Matthew 16. I'm glad everybody's paying attention today. Matthew 16, 13. Let's speak it. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But he said to them, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ. In other words, the anointed one and his anointing. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood. has not revealed this to you, but my Father, who is in heaven, so... Peter got a revelation from Jesus through by the Father. I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock, on this anointing, on this foundation, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Now, there's a clue. So what is the greatest tool of resistance? The anointing, which is the eternal power presence of God Almighty. What is the anointing? Write it. What is it? The eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. That's called the anointing. And then he says something here. So those are tools of resistance. The anointing. But with the tool of resistance, now he gives us a tool of attack. These are called assault weapons of God. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. These are assault weapons. Binding and loosing. Why? Because you're able to drive these spirits out. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So we have not only tools of resistance, but we have assault weapons that we can use. Binding and loosening. We got the word of God. We got the uh, uh, blood of Jesus in his name. That's what triggers everything. Without his name, nothing gets triggered. Amen? That's what pulls the trigger is the name of Jesus. So the revelation of Christ as the anointed one and his anointing was brought to Peter. It's the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. It's to resist all manner of attacks from the dark side of the evil world. And again, with assault weapons of binding and loosening. But this is a tool. In other words, so many people are trying to attack without resist. It doesn't work. You first must resist, hello, then you can attack. Because you've got to hold back the enemy, then you attack. You first must resist all things that are affecting your mind, your thoughts, your desires, everything, so that you can use assault weapons. Hello. Mark 14. Tools of resistance. 
Now there's tools of exposure. There's tools of edification. God has given these, these tools. Those are the gifts of the spirits, our tools. That's why it's important to pray in tongues. If you don't know what to do and you're waiting on something, pray in the spirit. God we will reveal it to you. If he hasn't, then don't do anything. Wait. Mark 14, verse 3. Mark 14, verse 3. That's good. I'll come out of John for a minute. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Good. Let's speak it. And being in Bithany at the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came having an alabaster flask of very costly oil of spikenard or spikenard, whatever it is. Then she broke the flask and poured it on the head of Jesus. She didn't break it on his head, amen? She broke it and poured it on his head, okay? But there were some who were indignant among themselves and said, why was this fragrant oil wasted? Now, can you imagine that? These guys obviously were not in the spirit. <laughs> Here they were. She broke this alabaster expensive box that held the sacred oil, poured it on the head of Jesus, which is called the anointing. Amen? And verse 5. For it might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor, as they criticized her sharply. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always, and whenever you wish, you may do with them good. But me, you do not have always. She has done what she sh should, that she could. She has come beforehand to anoint my body for what? Burial. As surely I say to you, whatever the go wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. Now the anointing oil was preparing Jesus to resist attacks of emotion, fear, pain, and sufferings so that he can bear and get to the cross. Why? Because the anointing is a tool of what? Resistance. See, because he wasn't looking at the seen. He was looking at the unseen. Does everybody understand that? But some could not see the unseen of the eternal purpose, only the temporary spoil for self-use. That's all they could see. In Mark chapter 1. Tools of resistance. Is worship a tool of resistance? Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, screaming could be occasionally, you know, you might want to scream. It might help resist someone from doing something stupid. I don't know. Don't go there. You know. But it's temporary. <laughs> Mark 1, verse 9. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of the Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And what happened? Now he was baptized by John in the Jordan. And immediately coming, upon, coming up from the water, he saw the heavens parting and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. Now there was the anointing. Then a voice came from heaven, you are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Immediately after Jesus received the anointing, Immediately, he was drove, he, uh, the Spirit drove him into the wilderness to battle. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. So again, we see the anointing, the tool of resistance. 
Jesus was anointed to resist all emotional attacks to go to the cross. Amen. And then he was also anointed to go prior to that to go battle against the devil before he could even go to the cross. Why? Because he had to submit to God to resist the devil. He went into the wilderness to resist the devil. Then he was able to go to the cross. Amen? Was there anything different between him and me and you? No. The same tools that were given to him are given to me and you. That's whether we use them or not. 1 John chapter 2. First John chapter 2 and verse 12. Let's speak it together. I write to you, little children, because your sins are what? Forgiven. You for his name's sake. I write to your fathers because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you, little children, because you have known the Father. I have written to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who abides, who does the will of God, ab abides for what? Forever. Little children, it is the last hour, and if you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been with us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest, that none of them were of us. But you have a what? An anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. If you know all things, are you able to resist? Yeah. In 2 Timothy 2. Second Timothy chapter two. Verse twelve. I mean uh, verse twenty one, I'm sorry. Second Timothy two twenty one. Is everybody there? Let's speak it therefore. If anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he'll be a vessel of honor. Sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Philia also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. In other words, be careful of associations. Flee, um, but avoid what? Foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God will perhaps grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by the devil to do his will. Why? They didn't resist. Well, there's no resistance. You know, I remember seeing those stickers on the back of vehicles, just say no. Yeah, try and tell a drug addict, just say no. It's not easy. Why? Because they don't have the tools to say no. You can say no all day long. You can promise God you're not going to use again. But you can't stop until you get the eternal weapons of God. Amen? The arsenal. We need the assault weapons of God so that we can resist. We need the anointing of God to maintain that. Isaiah 40. Tools of resistance.
Isaiah 40. Is prayer a tool of resistance? Yeah. The word says pray without ceasing. How about sowing in the spirit? What does that do? Helps you reap what? Life. Amen. Isaiah 40, verse 28. Have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is what? Weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord. Is wait a part of resistance? Amen. They shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. And they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Second Peter 3. Oh, it's good to hear the pages turning on a Sunday morning. Second Peter chapter 3. Verse 14. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless. And consider that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given him, has written to you. As also in his epistles, speaking in, in them the things in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware, lest you also fall from your own what? Steadfastness. Is that a position of resistance? Yes. Being led away with error of the wicked. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to him be the glory, both now and forever and ever. Again, steadfastness is a position of resistance. And I'm going to close at 1 John chapter 4. John, 1 John chapter 4. Verse 17, is everybody there? Let's speak it. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have the boldness in the day of, a, of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves what? Torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he does not love his brother whom he has seen. How can he love God whom he has not seen? And this is the commandment that we have for him, that he who loves mu God must love his brother also. Perfect love is a res uh, resistance tool to fear, anxiety, stress, insecurities, anxiousness, and every other push of the enemy. It is a tool to resist God's love. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 13, and we'll close here. Let's look what love is.
1 Corinthians 13 and verse 8. Now, do you get love by just saying, I love? No. When you love someone, do you love them long distance? <laughs> I mean, you can write letters. But you can't even love them long distance until you've met them and been in their presence. Amen? It's the same thing with God. How can you love God? I mean, at first we can say, I love God. How can you really say you love God if you've never been in his presence? You can't. You can say you'd like to love God. I want to love God. But you cannot love God unless you're in his presence. Because it's his presence that releases his love to you. And penetrates every part of your being. The more you're in God's presence, the more you love God. And the more you're able to resist. The less you're in God's presence, the less you love God. It diminishes. So let's look at what love is. Now, this is not love of the world. This is the love of God, the love of God's presence, the eternal love. It says here, verse 8, love never fails. Speak it. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will all vanish away because everything's coming to an end. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. Right? But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away with. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Now, go to verse 4. Love does what? Suffers what? Long. And is what? Kind. So even though it's been suffering long, it doesn't become rude or a brat or a moron. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy or be jealous. Love does not parade itself or post its face all over Facebook. It's not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek his own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. Bears all things believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Love. God resistance. Amen? It's a resistance tool from God for me and you because it can bear all things. But you can't get it without being in God's presence. Amen? Bottom line. You can justify it and you can reason. But until you maintain that presence, that level of presence, you can't resist. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We thank you, Lord, for allowing your presence to activate these tools of resistance. Help us to constantly submit to you that we may resist the flesh, the emotional desires of the soul, the goofy thoughts, and the attacks of the enemy in the ways of the world. Even to resist sicknesses and diseases and rejections and offenses, resisting them, that we may maintain our atmosphere holy and clean and pure for your presence in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.